Hey guys, I'm back with another interesting tutorial for you guys. Today we will learn how to create animated grass. But first, if you're new here or haven't subscribed already, then please subscribe so you're always updated of my new upcoming videos. And if you want the finished blend file, you can get it on my Gumroad as well as on my Patreon page. Well, back to Blender. Delete the cube and the lamp first. Shift A, image as planes. But uh, let me clear one thing first. Many of the new beginners were asking about my last grass tutorial. Why to use image as planes when you can just simply drag and drop the image directly? Yes, you can. Most of you might have tried it already, but uh, it doesn't work because uh, it will be working as an empty, not an image plane. Yes, you can fix it, but uh, it's best to use image as planes. If you can't see this option, then go to edit, preferences, add-ons, search for image and then enable image as planes. Well, again, shift A, image as plane, search for your desired image. Rotate it along its x axis so it's facing upward. Actually, I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees along its z axis as well to make it face the front view, but the image isn't looking right. It can be fixed easily by simply reducing the specular value and increasing the roughness in the material editor. Tap to go to the edit mode, right click, subdivide, have at least 30 number of cuts. Select one vertex, turn on proportional editing, GZ to move this vertex upward a little bit. Now when we are done, go to the modifiers tab and select displace. Click on new, now click on the texture tab, select clouds. It's a bit too much now, so we are gonna increase its size, like uh, something 0.75. Yeah. Back to the modifiers tab and decrease the strength to like uh, 0.12 or you can do 0.120, it's totally up to you. And now we can see we have a good looking curve now. Now go to the particles tab, click on plus and then switch to hair. Well the hair or we can see our grass is kinda too long. We will reduce its length to something like 3 inches. It's okay, but I guess uh, 0 0.06 will look much better. Yeah, it sure is looking much better. Well, I'm gonna increase the number of particles to something like 10,000. 10K isn't good for the final render, but yeah, it's good enough for us to have an idea of how it's gonna look like in the final render. But it's way too sharp to be called grass, and we are gonna fix it. If you can't see physics here, you just have to check advanced for that. Well, hair dynamics and velocity, we will talk about them in a while. First, go to physics, increase Brownian to 0 0.019. You can see it's taking its shape. Now, change dam to 0 0.005. So, if we increase our hair count to like 30,000, it's looking awesome. But, uh, we are not gonna stop here, we will modify it a little bit more so it looks even more cool. So what we are gonna do now is to scroll down, click on textures, click on new, name this texture height, click on the texture tab, select moss grave. What we will do now is to change its size to 0 0.06. And now we can see a lot of black dots. What it will do is that uh, where there is a black dot, it's gonna reduce the hair length. And using this texture is gonna create a sense of long and short grass. We changed its size already, but we can see nothing happened. But uh, what we will do now, we will scroll down a bit, click on influence. We can see a lot of disabled checkboxes. Each of these checkboxes can create an influence on our model using the Musgrave texture we just created. But we are not gonna change or even test all of them. We will only enable hair length. And now you can see there's a change in the hair length. You can notice it if you enable and disable the checkbox. Only doing this is going to create a sense of more realism in your scene. Well now, if you don't have a good PC or you know your PC can't handle the animation or dynamics, you can simply use it like this for any still image. And what you can do now is to simply go to the particles tab, increase the hair count to 20 or 30,000, it depends on your PC. Then go to the shading tab, switch to old, 
Shift A, search for environment texture node, click on open. You can search for any SDRI that you have downloaded already in your system. By the way, you can download free SDRIs from sdrihaven.com. You can totally check out their website. They are doing an awesome job. Press Ctrl T to bring in mapping and texture coordinate nodes. If you can do that, then you have to enable the node wrangler add-on. Just enable it and you will be able to perform this action. You can bring in a hue saturation node as well if you feel the background is less saturated. Increasing saturation by only 0.1 is enough for this scene. And if you have already placed a camera where you need it and you don't like the background, you can simply rotate the background by increasing the Z rotate value in the mapping node. But keep in mind, doing this will also change the lighting in your scene. Yeah, I use this angle for my final render. And you still can edit and make more adjustments to your image plane. Yep, this looks much better now. If you feel your PC can't handle the dynamics, then it's totally okay to use this as your final render and it's totally gonna look awesome. It's time to enable hair dynamics. Quality steps is set on 5 by default, collisions to 2. Most of these settings are already usable. You don't need to change all of them. The things that need changing are in structure. Vertex mass is set on 0.3 kg. I used 0.3 for my final render, but what this value might do is that it's gonna make our grass a little bit heavier and it will fall down and collide with one another. It simply creates an illusion of longer grass. But uh, if you want your grass to stay still like it already is right now, then you need a much smaller number, something like 0.01 kg. It's totally your own choice. But we are not done talking about vertex mass. For a better understanding, we're gonna talk more about it throughout this video. Now one more thing that we're gonna change is the random value. Change it to 0.047. It's gonna control the grass random fall off and in velocity change normal to 0.015 now with 0.3 kg you will see our grass particles will start bending like uh, you can see right now they are even colliding with one another and yeah, it's looking awesome to me. Now test for 0.01 kg. You can see it's too light to fall on and nothing is happening. And if you like this look, then 0.01 kg is your number. But you might be saying, we already got this look without even enabling dynamics, then why should we use it now? Yep, you don't need it if you want a still image, but for animation you need to enable it. I will be using 0.3 kg because I like the look. You can totally go for your own number. It's totally your own choice. Well, enough talking about dynamics. It's time to animate. Shift A, force fields, bring in wind. Rotate it 90 degrees along X axis. GY to move it to a side and GZ to move it upward a little bit, yeah, something like that. Nope, I want our wind to be coming from the other side. So I'm gonna rotate it 180 degrees along Z axis and move it to the other side. Wind strength is set to one. I will be increasing it to like uh, 1.25, but the wind is still gonna be slow. Now here I wanna clear one thing, it's not only the wind strength number that counts, it depends on your gross weight as well. Our grass is set on 0.3 kg, which is kinda heavy, so 1.25 is a good number for it for slow wind. In other words, uh, you can say our grass is kinda heavy for the wind to move it. For fast windy animation, you can increase your wind strength to like 1.5 or even uh, you can try to, or uh, you can decrease the gross weight. But uh, if you are using a mass of 0.01 kg, then even the value of 1 can be an overkill. 
you should set your wind strength to something like 0.3 or even 0.2 for softer wind in short heavier the grass we need a high wind strength number and lighter the grass try to use less strength on your wind you can try and play with the settings it's totally on you now i hope you got my point But if you render it now, you will see the wind will look continuous, which it never is. So we can fix it simply by adding noise, which can be done easily by just increasing the noise amount to 1. And also change the seed value to something like 82. Yeah, now it's done. You can increase the head count to 30,000 now. Now control Alt numpad 0 to put the camera directly at your viewing angle. Play with the focal length and depth of field in the camera settings. Shift A, bring in a sun lamp. Rotate it. Move it to a side. But the biggest thing, the animation won't be rendering properly till every frame animation is in the cache memory. You can either let it play on the timeline, but the proper way is to bake the animation. In the particles tab, click on cache. You can set the number of frames here on which you want the animation to be baked on. Like I want 120 as my final frame. But if you are using 0.3 kg, then the first 20 frames might not be usable because it's gonna look like this. You see, not usable. But you still can bake them. If you wanna save time, you can skip these frames later while rendering. But if you are using 0.01 kg as your grass mass, then uh, you won't be facing this problem. Well. When you are all done, you can simply click on bake and let it bake your animation. Now a big if, if Blender crashed or anything happened while baking, you might find your scene like this. There won't be any grass here in the viewpoint and you won't be able to even render it. And even if you delete the bake, it's not gonna show the grass. A simple fix, disable and then enable the particle system and the grass will be back. It's not a big deal, everything else is totally fine. And you can see, this is how it's gonna look after it's done baking. You will see a red line in your timeline. And if you press play now, it will start animating and it won't be jerky. You can select the start and the end frames for your render here. Turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections, shadow cube size to 1024, check high bitrate and soft shadows. Look to medium high contrast or it's totally your own choice. You can also do the compositing as well if you want. I also did but I won't be discussing about it in this video because I don't want to make this video even more longer. And we are done. I hope it was easy for all of you and you all have your own version of the animation by now. I will totally love to hear about your experience in the comment box and you can even send your renders on my insta or even on my facebook. Well, hope you liked the video and might have learned something new. In the end, a big thanks to all of my patrons, supporters, followers and the subscribers. It's because of you guys I keep on making more and more videos. Well, this is it. See you in my next video. Take care till then. Happy blending.